Oh, goody. All right, what's up, everybody? It is Zombies here again. And today we have another Meta Monday video. This is going to be Meta Monday number five. And I was actually thinking initially we weren't going to have one of these this week because before we were thinking the patch might have dropped tomorrow, but it's actually dropping a week from tomorrow. So we have a little bit more time with things as they are than most people previously thought. So I figured it would be a good time to kind of take one final last look back at the Valera meta before we have new stuff introduced that could potentially shake things up. So um, there are a lot of decks here that were featured last time. Um, there are a few different ones that are that were not featured. So we're going to go over those and then we're actually going to be looking at some data here. So this is really cool. Basically, Hearthstone Replay has some really awesome mercenaries features coming very soon um, that I'm very excited to share with you. And one of those features involves data collecting for teams. So we get a little bit of a idea of what the uh, the population kind of of the meta is like like we can see in other formats like wild and standard so i think that's really really cool i'm actually going to be doing a full breakdown um on wednesday of all the new features that they're actually bringing for mercenaries so i'm really excited to do that and share that with everybody because i think it's going to be a great resource and tool for the community and especially new players who are just kind of looking for something to play and not really sure what items to use, which mercenaries to grind up. I think this will be a very good tool. I just make it easy to just take a look at the mercenaries here, see them, see their equipment and kind of know what to work towards. So really excited to be doing all that stuff. But again, that's going to be Wednesday for today. We are looking at the comps in the meta. So. We're going to start off with our non Valera comps here. So basically, uh, this is a Valera meta. Right now, the only two comps that are really uh, showing up in bigger numbers that are not Valera decks are Frost decks. So we have Lich Frost here, which is Lich King, Jaina, Barden. So just typical frost lead with a good third. Lich King's very strong with frost. And then very standard Karen Diablo cookie backbench. Nothing too surprising there. However, the other build of uh, frost is actually pretty different. So frost Tyrion. So frost Tyrion. Actually, we have the same frost lead, but instead we have Tyrion here. And Tyrion is trying to leverage that Ashbringer to buff up the backline of Karen Diablo Illidan. Um, sometimes this can be pretty strong against nature backlines because you have three greens and they lean pretty hard on Brucon a lot of the time for their big damage. So you can kind of clean it up quickly with your big buff units and it makes them a bit harder to kill. So this is, I think this is probably the best Frost deck right now. I think it's better than the, the Lich King version, but they both see a fair amount of play um, and are probably the two best Frost decks that don't involve Valera. So looking past that, um, I'm actually going to throw in the, a bonus here for the, the human comp. This is not on any kind of data or radar. But this is one I've been trying out, and I think there is something with humans. I don't know if this is the exact list, but I do think um, with something like this, it could be pretty powerful. This one's trying to counter the Valera Grom starts. So we have Varian, Cornelius, Big Taunt, and Sustain with the heals. And then Tyrion, make big things small, buff our stuff. The Divine Shield can be really nice, and the biggest thing, the plus eight, plus eight. Um, the backbench, Anduin, um, we need some good blues, so Anduin and Rogers both do a really good job, giving us some solid AoE potential. 
Handy to win with the healing, especially if you have Cornelius around still, can get pretty, pretty strong. Lich King, you do have that healing synergy as well, and you really do want the slows. Uh, the slows are generally very good, and sometimes you can do like alternate openers with the Lich King instead of like Cornelius against something like Nature Opener. So it's a it's a very versatile comp. I think it still needs some uh, messing around with to be to find like the best version because um, I'm not sure this is it. But that's kind of uh, the fun fun bonus non Valera comp of uh, of this this feature. So now that we've talked about all of the non Valera comps, it's time to talk about the Valera comps. So with our Valera comps, we have a lot of them here. Um, we're going to start out with, oh, I might not even have it in a list. Let's see. Yeah, it's funny. So we'll just start out with, uh, with the one that people probably are going to be surprised to see. And that is Samuro, Gromash, and Valera into nature backline. So personally, I haven't ran into a lot of this, but it, it actually had a surprisingly higher amount of uh, games recorded for it so i guess it was pretty popular um i could see this being good if more caster heavy leads start uh popping back up but right now um the kind of biggest player in the meta in terms of popularity is Valera, grom and thrall with the nature backline i think i forgot to put it in as a deck but We'll talk about it here because we're going to look it on the graph in a minute here, but it's just a by far the, the most popular deck. Um, basically, you can go Valera, Grom, and any third right now with a nature backline and you'll probably see some success. It is just an incredibly versatile comp that slots in a lot of different options. So it's uh, it's very, very powerful and something you're probably going to see a lot of on ladder. So continuing the Valera comps here, we have a Grom Valera Natalie. Um, the benefit here is you do have light beam so you can stack your two speed abilities with Grom, help you win speed ties against mirror matches. So that's kind of pretty strong. Switching between Anathema and Benediction is also really good. Um, just a, a very, very strong start with Grom and Valera. And then uh, the CDC backline with them. Just generically strong and good there. Especially if you get something like Diablo in with a stealth Valera. Um, another one that has been uh, seeing more play recently is the Shadow Valera variant. You actually lead with Vol'jin and Natalie. And you have Valera along with them. I think this is picking up uh, more play because the Valera um, and Thrall variant is so popular with the double reds leading with a double blue. Just deal as much damage as you can over the next two turns. It can be pretty huge. Um, so it's definitely, definitely a option worth considering. And this one also runs the CDC backline because, you know, starting with double caster, we can't really afford two more in the back. And now here is one that most people might not have uh, expected or seen, but it's actually gotten rather popular. So this is Vol'jin, Grom, and Thrall. So what this comp kind of does is as far as I understand it, it's supposed to be a counter to Valera, Grom, Thrall. And the idea is you lead with Vol'jin, Grom, Thrall, and it is favored, I think, against um, the Valera lead version. And then you have actually a Valera of your own on the back, as well as Natalie to combo with the Vol'jin and Cookie for the extra health. So it is a, it's kind of a... It always kind of looked like a weird build to me, but apparently it seems to be working for people. So definitely something uh, worth looking into there. And then I think we have one more I wanted to look at here. Ah, yes. So the, the Nature Valera. So with this build, 
we basically are using a Malfurion, Brucon, and Lyra lead. And this is quite strong because even though we can't combo, combo Valera on turn one, we're okay with them focusing our Valera. Brucon's actually the biggest threat here. This particular version, even though we're running the CDC backline, um, we actually have the Thunderous Sash on for this version. So extra damage on Stomp over the Reincarnation. I think it's really, really powerful in a build like this. Um, there are two versions played though, basically same exact deck, but there is a version with Thunderous Stomp or Thunderous Sash and Reincarnation. And I believe the Sash version has about double the play right now. So I think it has kind of been solidified as the more popular and in my opinion, a uh, better performing version of the deck. But this is a really powerful one. And I think that is the the last of the decks I have in the client here. Um, unfortunately, we we do we are limited to the the nine decks for now, but that's okay because we actually have more information. So I made a little uh, graph here. Basically, I took a look at the. Uh, the amount of games uh, played by a comp and I looked at every comp that had about 1000 games or more played with it and I put them all together in a pie chart um, and this is across all ranks and I thought it was interesting to give a kind of look at what the representation of a lot of these popular and successful comps in the current meta uh, looks like. So I have two charts here. The first one we're going to look at is looking at only comps with 1000 or more recorded games. So as you can see, I'll go through them here. Our most popular uh, comp here by a significantly large margin is GVT, so Grom Valera Thrall Nature backline, so Cookie, Brucon, and Malfurion. Total games played just under 7,000, and the percentage total here is just under 38%. So that is a huge, huge portion of the. Uh, the whole circle here that's pretty crazy when you look at the second highest up one which actually kind of surprised me it was Tyrion frost with that karen diablo and illidan bench and it was coming in at 2200 games played 22.2 percent representation so it's actually kind of crazy if you if you add up the the numbers from just GVT and Tyrion Frost, that is actually half of the total games played out of these comps with 1k uh, plus wins. S or not, uh, total games. 1k plus games. So, that's pretty crazy. Um, now we start to see the numbers go down a bit. Next one up is the Grom Valera Natalie, Karen Diablo Cookie. Um, that one has just under 10%, the 1700 games played. Um, a lot of these, these comps uh, going down here start getting kind of closer in uh, sample size, um, as we can see. So, Nature Valera with the Big Stomp version was just about 9% with 1,600 games. We actually have it, uh, we have it represented twice in, uh, in this graph. One with Big Stomp, one with Reincarnation, like I mentioned before. But we'll get to Reincarnation when we're further down the list, because as I said, the Big Stomp version is definitely more popular at this point. So next, this is the one that really surprised me personally, was the 
Grom Valera Samuro nature build with just under 9% as well. Um, I did not expect that build to uh, basically be represented that much. I didn't, I personally haven't ran into it very much at all. I've only seen it like a handful of times compared to a lot of the other Valera comps. So, but maybe that's just my experience. Um, next one I think is kind of a more recent find. The Grom, Vol'jin, and Thrall. The Valera Cookie Natalie bench. As we see now, drops off a little bit more. This is only just over 6% of the representation here. So the, this last kind of range is between 5 and 6%. So still a fairly notable part of the metagame. But a, a it's a very small portion compared to the representation of our kind of dominant comp here. Uh, Grom Valera Thrall. So the next one is Natalie Bolgen Valera CDC. So that one is the Shadow Valera build. That one, I think, again, has been getting a little more popular recently as Shadow was gone for quite some time. Um, but I think due to the double protector starts becoming super, super popular, it has allowed Shadow to come back a little bit. And that is at 5.6% uh, representation. Then Nature Valera CDC. This is the Reincarnate build. As you can see, it's only 5.6% compared to just under 9% for the Big Stomp version. So it is a pretty significant uh, difference in terms of the one people seem to continue to be playing again personally i definitely recommend big stomp i think it is definitely the way to go for that kind of build and then last but not least we have the lich king frost comp with the karen diablo cookie bench and this is our only comp that was actually just under 1k wins or 1k games so this was 980 but I thought it was worth including because I um, saw it a fair amount about a week ago. Haven't seen it quite as as much myself in the last few days, but I think it is still out there. And I did want to have another uh, Frost build included because it was just right on the, the border of crossing the threshold. So 5.5% representation. Um, this is a really interesting uh, graph. So keep in mind, this isn't of all the comps played. As I said uh, before, this is just comps that had that uh, 980 or more games played because I did want to look at comps with a bigger sample size um, as those are kind of the staples of the meta right now, I would say. Um, as we can see, GVT nature is just a hugely dominant force. Um, I think, you know, some of these other decks on here can do well against it, uh, but it is, I think it is proven to just be incredibly resilient and it is going to be uh, interesting to see if we can find some new counters for that. Once the, uh, the new mercenaries come out, I'm, I think it's going to be really interesting to see if anyone can come up with a really solid counter no one has discovered yet before the tournament on the weekend uh, for anyone who doesn't know big mercenaries tournament this weekend I'll have a link in the description to it uh, if you want to find out more information or sign up but there is one thousand dollars in prizes and is sponsored by hs replay so super big thanks to them for supporting the uh, up and coming mercenary scene really love to see it and really excited to uh share more stuff that uh, they have coming for the Mercenaries features because I think they're going to be really great and I think people are going to really enjoy them. So that is our first graph here. Now I did create one more graph. Um, basically with this other graph I decided we took all the, the numbers that we have here in our, uh, in our sample um, from these very popular comps 
but we decided to lower the threshold of uh, what it was required to make it in. So instead of it being 1,000 games played, I decided to lower the threshold to 500 games played. And I was curious to see if that would make things look different at all. So let's take a look at that. Oh. Basically, what I ended up doing here was, as we can see, GBT is a smaller portion of the pie here. And that is because I added in a section for comps that were 500 or more wins, but less than that 1000 threshold. So there were a fair amount of different comps in there, but a lot of them were similar. Like for example, there was the Frost Tyrion comp, except the only difference was Illidan was rocking a different equipment. Right now, on the most popular Frost Tyrion comp, they run the ability that makes their first attack on the left side attack twice, and then the smaller uh, sample size one is the plus 10 attack. So there's a lot of instances like that where it's just a slightly different build of a comp, and we did get a few one-offs of some kind of interesting fringe decks, such as there was a fire build in there. There was a, what was it? There was a fire build. There was a orcs build. So only one of them. Um, obviously those builds aren't quite as popular as some of these other builds, but I thought it would be interesting to see if we did lower the requirement um how much that kind of changed things as the one we were looking at before did only include the decks with a bigger sample size so this still doesn't include everything there are comps with a lower sample size than 500 but i thought 500 was a kind of good number to see because you know with 500 games in a week's time obviously seeing a fair amount of play across the ladder so even even with adding um nine more comps gvt is still over a quarter of the metagame share um so it's pretty uh it's pretty pretty ridiculous how uh how popular it is right now um generally these numbers stay true at higher ranks as far as i have seen um it is it is very similar with uh it is very similar in terms of uh, representation at the top ranks as well as lower ranks so it all kind of trickled down as there's been enough time for people to kind of uh figure out that it's popular for a reason um, so as we can see, the other number is not really super different. Tyrion Frost goes down to just below 10%. And we have these three right here. The Grom, Valera, Nat, CDC, Nature, Valera, Big Stomp, and the Grom, Valera, Samuro, Nature, all around that 7% mark. And then the other comps, as before, instead of five, they're now a little bit lower, about, you know, four, four and a half percent. And then these comps here, you know, nine comps representing about a quarter, quarter of the, the games here. Obviously, some of these comps will basically look like a lot of these other ones here because they're just the same comp with just an equipment swap, like we saw with the big stomp versus the reincarnate here because um, you add those two together and then suddenly it is the second biggest uh, or one of the biggest comps or most popular comps in the game so that's why i opted to include those ones together um, hopefully as time progresses we can take another look at this kind of data in the future as i think it's really interesting to kind of see it all graphed out and we're going to go through a lot of the data that they have available when I show off the uh, features in their new Mercenaries Edition to the website. 
So that is super exciting. Again, that's going to be on Wednesday. So look forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun going through that and getting to share those features with everybody. Um, that is basically going to do it for this video though. I do hope you have enjoyed it. Um, would love to hear your thoughts below on the meta and everything. We are going to get some patch notes on Thursday. So definitely look forward to that. And we'll be covering that on the podcast as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. But that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed it, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does a ton to help out the channel and keep the videos coming. But that's going to do it for me. I will see you in the next one. Peace.